you're coming down to see the earliest spiritual writing when people say the Bible. The point is, is that that's why it says in the King James Version, diligently compared and revised. But revised to what? You have to come all the way to the text and coming forth by day and by night where these spiritual writings were written long before King James, long before the New Americanized Version, long before long before the Septuagint version and all these other various versions. This is where the earliest spiritual writing is at. So we're going to go I have to bend down a little bit and we're going to come up in the chamber of Teddy. Greece didn't exist. They were in caves painting themselves blue. <laughs> Teddy's pyramid of the sixth dynastic period. As I said before, the difference of the old kingdom pyramids that you saw at the Giza Plateau that you're equally going to see in Dajor is that those pyramids have no medunetter, no writing. But during the 5th and the 6th dynasty, we see the writing, what is known as the pyramid text. This is where the pyramid text came from. This is the prototype of the earliest religious writing. Without this, Kemet would not have Per and Haru coming forth by day and by night. You would not have a Torah you would not have a Bible, and you would not have a Quran. Mm. This is the origin of the earliest spiritual writing. We're talking about this pyramid is actually a book in stone. What we need to highlight in the time left are the people who have enriched our lives with the written word. We can start in 2800 BC with Patahotep, who wrote the oldest known book in the world by the Middle Kingdom in Kemet, these ancient African people had begun a writing tradition still familiar to us today. A story called The Tale of Two Brothers comes to us. All forms of writing from the epic poem to the novel had been solidified by that time. Jumping forward in time, we see the African tradition of writing continued. Brothers and sisters, here we have holy texts, holy writings. We've gone into Onus's pyramid. We've gone into Teti's pyramid. Spiritual writing when the Sahu, the spiritual body, astral projected. This is long before biblical text was even in existence. You can't talk about African contributions without talking about African written contributions. We've told you about the 27 known written languages which existed before European contact. Let me just show you in Sibidi. Mende, the Moon script from the Cameroons, the Vi script from Liberia, and the Bete script from the Ivory Coast. And it's important to expose students to all these different writing systems because that destroys the myth that African people had no systems of writing, that African people did not write. It's a myth. It's a lie. Here you have the Incivity script on your right, and then you have the Egyptian script on the left. Look at the similarities. Look at them. Comparison between the Egyptian script and the Toma signs. Look at the similarities. See, when you look at stuff like this, then it becomes very hard for people to tell you that, well, Egypt was isolated. Egypt was not a part of Africa. The Mende signs. This is Vi. The Moon. So I don't know what they keep trying to talk about that Mes Mesopotamia brought anything into Africa. That's bullshit. Ain't nothing out there in, 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 in what you call high rock, but nothing but mud mounds. They ain't got no stone, no papyrus. And if anybody tell you they was writing before the Africans, they telling a damn lie. Because paper come from papyrus. If they was writing before the African, tell, ask them what the hell was they writing on. That's all you got to ask. What was you writing on? So we move on, we can see here at the Great Temple of Amun and Karnak, going all the way back in its foundation from the 12th dynastic period, you can see Roman numerals before the Romans. <laughs> Ryan mathematical pathways. Here you can see the here you can see the the area of a triangle. They're figuring out the area of triangles here in Kemet. And look at the heretic writing here. This is not even this 
See, they had three different types of writing. And here you can see the volume of pyramids, the volume of truncated pyramids. And they always telling us how advanced the, Me the Mesopotamian mathematics was. They never show you a single example of it. Just tell you that. The Ashago Ball is the world's oldest mathematical artifact. Most people think that the study of mathematics had its origins in ancient Egypt and Babylonia, but this view was dramatically challenged in the 1950s with the discovery of a small animal, bo animal bone inscribed with marking that appeared to represent numbers. It don't appear, they are numbers. The artifact was discovered in a small African fishing village of Ashango on the border of Zaire and Uganda at the beginning of the Nile, which we said the Ashango bone now lies at the Museum of Natural Science in Brussels and has been dated to around 20,000 BC. Alexander Marjak and Jean de Hazelin agree it shows the first evidence of multiplication of math skills in the world. You see the lines? You see, this? You see the carvings? See, it didn't develop. They got carvings on it. And so this is what it developed to. I'll bring it back for you, family. So y'all can see the development. It come out of the interior of Africa. And it come down and now, and this is what you have in Egypt. You got one of them in Babylonia? Mesopotamia? Uh, 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 Maya Aztecs. Then there are such things as the Amos Mathematical Papyrus, also known as the Rhine Papyrus. It lets you know that the ancient Kamites knew about truncated pyramids, quadratures of circles and fractions thousands of years ago, well before computers. They also had the mathematical sophistication to create star clocks, merquettes, and water clocks. Again, it's worth reminding you that Egypt is in Africa. So this mathematical accomplishment came from Africans and African people. Now here we go with the Elvis Pack, 1525-1504 BCE. Edwin Smith Papyrus, 1600 BCE. And you can see to the right is the Arabic. And you can see where they copied right over out of the Moran. Because they didn't have no damn book. Look at the day, uh, the 8th Dynasty, 1500 BCE. Joshua. Late Egypt, uh, second century. Matthew, Egypt, first half of the fourth century. Leviticus, uh, Egypt, late century. The oldest manuscript of Jonah and First Peter, Egypt, third century. See the arm, see the arm, and the cross. Still on there, still on there, family. There it is. I blew it up for you so you can see it. That's the that's the Gospel of Judas. Go look it up. But they just show you right there, there was right no papyrus. That come up out the Nile Valley. These are the oldest parts of the goddamn Bible. This is third century in Egypt. We developed paper because we was pushing the technology of language. Language is a technology, and we were developing all kinds of languages. We already got the research to show that we are the authors of writing. We invented papyrus. I ask anybody, if you invented writing, what the hell did you write it on? Because we invented paper coming from papyrus, which is an indigenous African plant. You can go right to the damn internet and type in papyrus, and it's going to tell you an indigenous plant from uh, Egypt, the Nile Valley, and he's going to show me some clay cookies that are a little low life descended of an a raft and wrote a little clay cookie. I'm going to show you this shit. And he's going to say that this man is the author of writing. Now, this is the Mesopotamians, writing on clay. They said, look at that shit. What the hell do that say? Nobody know. At least with the hieroglyphs, you can see some zoo types. You can see different things that really exist. Arms, people. What the hell is that? This is the ziggurat of Earth. This is, now, when you look at this, you say, okay, maybe they did have a little knowledge. But they dressed this down building up. This is what the damn building looked like before right now in this millennium they went over that little mud castle and put those bricks around there to give you the illusion that that's how it looked. But it could never compare to what you're looking at right here. The great pyramids of Giza that the Nile Valley Africans put down. Ain't no damn debate. Here it is. Right there in your face. And they're going to tell you that another civilization on, on the same level of Kemet existed in America. Nigga, show us the damn pyramid. Show us the architecture, the artifacts, and the writings. They can't show you nothing. Here again shows you the architecture of Mesopotamia. 
They only built with mud brick. If you're the cream of the planet Earth, you got to show me something better than this. Jesse, Jerusalem Muslim, Father Kabbalah, another weak ass scholar. The Dushango bone, evidence of crime number 25,000 BCE. 2650 step pyramid constructed. Use of of early use of integral calculus. We dropping calculus. We dropping dropping trigonometry. We dropping geometry. We dropping astronomy. We dropping mathematics. What do you have in Asia that can stand up to this this evidence, this hard evidence? In fact, 